Great. Good morning, everyone. My name is Troy Martin. You can find me on Twitter at Troy Mart. And today I'd like to talk to you guys about the traits of professionals and their organizations. Right? And I want to challenge what you guys think of when you hear the word professional. Okay, one thing I'd like to clarify is what I'm talking about when I mean professional. I'm not talking necessarily about the characteristics, um, which I will highlight here and just run through really briefly, but I'd like to emphasize some other components of what it means to be a professional. So some examples of the characteristics of a, of a professional include re being reliable, being accountable for your designs, what you're proposing to your customers, uh, maintaining your poise under pressure, uh, your appearance, right? Maybe you need to dress, uh, you know, wear a jacket, a button-up shirt, or maybe that's not the right attire. In my early days of networking, I worked for a carrier and was responsible for uh, running cables through ca crawl spaces, and they rated me at the end of my, my contract on how well I dressed. Uh, they rated me low because I wasn't showing up to work with a suit jacket every day, but the nature of my work was crawling through spaces, tearing up my shirts, getting covered in, in dirt and, and other things. So you need to dress appropriately for the environment that you're working in. Another thing that I wanted to point out on the slide is etiquette. So that includes phone etiquette, email etiquette, and also etiquette on Twitter. Okay, In the, in the process of being a professional, I know there's a, a extremely valuable community on Twitter. A lot of information is exchanged. Um, but I'd like to encourage everyone to approach Twitter with an open mind and be respectful of the other people you interact with on Twitter and, and be open to the ideas that they're proposing. Uh, as with uh, everything in Wi-Fi, it, there's, there's not necessarily a black and white. There's a lot of it depends, right? So uh, be respectful with who you interact with on Twitter. Okay, also related to this professionalism, there's a few talks that have uh, occurred in the past. Uh, Alan Blake, who's here today, has given a talk on the accreditation standards, you know, what goes into validating design and making sure best design practices are followed. Uh, later today, Alan's also giving in a talk on the uh, Wireless LAN Advisory Board. So I'm very excited to hear his talk, and I hope that when you guys listen to it, uh, you'll take some of the concepts that I'm presenting here, and you can realize the, the true value and benefit that this advisory board can bring to our community. Uh, Sam Clements also did a presentation earlier this year at WLPC in Phoenix, we talked about the integrity of the, the wireless LAN professional. So given a list of design requirements, uh, based on those requirements, was a, a, a solution uh, de delivered to customers that included integrity, or they're just trying to sell you know, more access points than was necessary, right? Just um, because someone puts APs in the hallways doesn't mean that the design didn't follow integrity. Maybe that was the best choice for design requirements that are available at the time. All right, so again, things aren't always black and white. Okay. So one of the questions I'd like you guys to think about is if you charge a service for your work, does that allow yourself to, to or does that allow you to call yourself a, a professional by collecting a fee for that? Um, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Perhaps there's more to what it means to be a professional. Now maybe you guys have heard of this company. I'm a, I'm a father of three kids. And so just looking at this name, there could be an implication that by buying the toys or the videos that this company produces, that it might, might, might make my kids smarter and think faster, grow into more, more uh, contributing adults to society. But just the, the title itself creates an implication of, of what it could mean. So using the label professional has an implication to others and to the public, people who aren't aware of the complexities of Wi-Fi, of what it means to be a professional. So when you use that name, there's a, uh, underneath, there's a certain implication of what you bring to the table. Okay, so there's a bunch of organizations out there that use and call themselves professionals. Uh, you have professional engineers, uh, some accountants and lawyers, uh, doctors have their professional organizations, even sports teams. You know, footballers and cricket players have professional organizations. So I'm going to be selective and call out some of the components that these organizations have to emphasize some of the attributes that I'd like us to associate as a community to what it means to be a wireless LAN professional. So one of the first things is a structured or accredited learning. This is some sort of formalized uh, program that all members of this professional organization would have to go through that level sets a base, uh, base set of knowledge that they'd have to bring to the table uh, when they market their skills out in the industry or when they complete their designs. And it'd be standardized across, uh, across the entire field. Um, there's also a component of apprenticeship and mentoring. Okay? And it could be you know, several weeks, it could be multiple years that you go through this apprenticeship program. Right? But it, it's learning from someone who's more experienced, more senior, 
in the trade or that craft that spent a lot of times in the trenches and it could advise you and guide you as you move from just coming out of your education structure uh, to doing some more field-based field, uh, field -based work, right, and kind of guiding you through that process. All right, there's also a licensed uh, component where you register with uh, a board or a, a community that takes care of measuring the, the education that you go through, uh, takes care of managing the legal representation with uh, society, uh, licensing it so that you can protect the terminology or protect the term professional itself. Okay, and membership of that, of that professional organization implies that you've met the professional characteristics, that you have that baseline education, and that you carry the weight and the backing of that professional organization. Okay. Uh, being part of that organization also holds you to a certain bar, right? So the bar is being raised that when you implement your designs, that should be following best practices across the industry. And there's a lot of different options for best practices. You know, one way isn't always the right way. For example, uh, you could choose to use some auto RF arm or RM type, type uh, design, or you could statically assign your channels. Okay, both could be valid, but as long as you're following best practices when implementing either of those options, that could be considered a uh, good design practice, right? So it still allows you a lot of flexibility throughout your designs. Okay. You also have a duty of care to the public. So as wireless networks become more and more mission critical, that if, as you're serving in the roles of professional wireless uh, designer, that you're taking into account the safety uh, of people's designs. So when you're designing a wireless network, for, uh, perhaps in, the, in a refinery or a chemical plant, that if it blows up and has power enough to level an entire city, that you're taking your due diligence to make sure that it's designed correctly and safely uh, to avoid any uh, catastrophic failures uh, due to your wireless design. Also with uh, IV pumps that are connected to the networks. Uh, any errors in communication or downtime of that network could result in, in a life and death situation. Okay. And also, having to be a member of this professional organization, if you fail to follow any of these guidelines, your membership can be revoked, right? So if you're not following the best practices, you can be essentially kicked out of this community and lose your ability to refer to yourself as professional uh, through a wireless LAN organization. So to summarize some of these points, uh, what I'd like us to set is the, the baseline or the bar to be calling ourselves wireless line professionals is have some sort of structured uh, education that we set as a baseline for every one of us to go through. Uh, I think it'd be a good idea if we had an apprenticeship program where you studied with someone or, or worked with them on different projects, someone who has experience in the field, learn from them. And that, again, it could be a, a few months, it could be a year, maybe it could be just one project but have some sort of system where we can educate and nurture people as they move from a, a base level of, of uh, structured education into the real world. Have some sort of licensing where we can register members as part of a, maybe it's just a national or a global organization that sets the bars for all these components. Also, confirm that we have care for the public, that we have reasonable uh, duty of care that we'll provide for them where we're looking out for safety. Okay, and of course, we want to have those characteristics of a professional, right? Making sure that those are still there. Now, some of these components, I think, already exist. With the education, we could leverage the CWNP program, maybe set the CWNA as our bar, or set the CWNE as our bar, something like that. Some of those things to be decided. But the point is that there's a uniform platform of education that everyone goes through, so we set that minimum bar of what people should know. Uh, with respect to licensed professionals, the advisory board could serve that purpose a global entity that could be responsible for registering professionals. And if you're registered as part of this board, that these are the distinctions that you carry with you that differentiates you from someone who's just swinging a hammer um, that's not necessarily a journeyman carpenter, for example. Okay. And if we're able to meet all these, these goals, maybe we'll be able to differentiate ourselves in the marketplace, uh, emphasize why someone who delivers, who, who's, why someone who's registered as a professional, delivering your network is better than someone who's just um, willy-nilly doing it, okay? And with this differentiation, hopefully we'll see lineups for wireless LAN professionals and people who are asking for wireless LAN professionals to deploy their networks, because I know it'll be done in a professional manner. Uh, they'll take into account public safety, and they'll have a base level of knowledge to implement designs that meet all of their goals. Okay, so that's uh, something I'd like you guys to think of for the next, uh, next couple days, um, as, especially during uh, Alan's presentation. Thank you.